my name is um, Joseph Ramani, and I am the founding director of the Division of Cancer Epidemiology and Genetics at the National Cancer Institute. Fred Lee and um, I came to the National Cancer Institute as uh, commissioned officers in the Public Health Service. I came first. I had completed my residency in medicine and with an interest in cancer. Fred Lee, on the other hand, came five years later and um, he had a passion for public health. We uh, really teamed up when, uh, when, when he arrived on the scene and he, we worked together on two big projects. One of them was studies of cancer-prone families to look for susceptibility mechanisms. And the other one was to look at childhood cancer about which practically nothing was known. Uh, one of the tumors that we looked at was rhabdomyosarcoma. And we found some interesting uh, features, and uh, including the fact that there was a lot of aggregation of cancer in the families. We kept looking for, for at the charts for the soft tissue sarcomas, and we saw an array of tumors occurring, not only in the cases presenting as multiple primary neoplasms, but also in family members. And uh, we um, felt that this was something important. And if we could only figure out what was behind it all, we might have uh, an important finding, an important discovery that uh, pertained to an array of tumors. It was always felt that cancer, when it occurs in families, was of a single type, <clears throat> but not multiple types of cancer. And we thought genetic susceptibility was the driving factor. There was still some skepticism as to whether this was really occurring because we didn't have a marker, a biological marker. Uh, so what we next did is followed up these families over time. In other words, a prospective study <clears throat> to see what was occurring. And we found that as we looked over time that the same cancers were occurring, the same constellation of cancers were occurring in, in, uh, in relatives who we believed uh, to have a uh, susceptibility state. We came along at a time when little was known about genetic susceptibility, but as we studied this particular syndrome, it was a genetic revolution that had begun. I think the, uh, the timing of our, our clinical and epidemiological study and the, gen and the genomic revolution that was occurring in, in the laboratory was uh, important. We reason that because P53 mutations had been uh, found in, oh, perhaps 60 or 70 percent of all cancers, maybe those mutations were transmitted through the bloodline, through the germline and were present in all cells. And that's what made them so susceptible to cancer. Then when we looked at P53, there, there were mutations were found. Now, these were pathogenic uh, variants of different kinds in, the, in, the, in all the cells of the body. So we, we had the, the hypothesis was, was tested and shown uh, to be correct. The impact of ACR has been enormous. Uh, there isn't a meeting really that seems to take place that doesn't have uh, fingerprints of ACR on it. The, the field of molecular epidemiology was, was coming along and Maj created this new uh, working group called Molecular Epidemiology and, and, and that had a big impact. Then she found a journal, this Cancer Epidemiology Biomarkets and Prevention and, uh, uh, and you know, the rest is history.